Reborn with OneLifeDefense.com and VioLenceOfMind.com. What is your mission? The very first step in any training protocol, the way that I see it and the way that I teach it, is to clearly define your mission. I know this sounds like a very simple concept, but from years of teaching people, I can tell you that it's probably the most skipped step in training. The mission defines every single thing that you will do in all the likely threats that you will face. So to, to be stupid simple about it, as a civilian that doesn't operate in any law enforcement or military capacity, training to do six-man team entries is not really in line with your mission because you're probably not going to be sleeping with five other dudes in full loadout here. So defining your mission has to be step one in a training protocol because that is going to determine what the parameters are, what the rules of engagement are, what your objectives are, what your threat assessment model will be like, and so on. So for a civilian, your mission is probably something like to make it home with your family every night for the rest of your life. That implies you getting home, your family getting home, and being able to continue to do that every day, uh, psychologically, physically, and legally whole as a person. So if that's your mission, your objectives are to protect yourself and your family. And let's not forget, protecting yourself and your family requires not only physical protection, but also legal protection. And a civilian is going to have rules of engagement that are very, very strict. So when you hear someone say, there are no rules in a fight, don't believe it. There are rules in a fight in this society that will put your ass in prison. Those rules are serious. You break those rules and you go to prison. Very, very clear. There are rules in a fight. If you're a bad guy, you may not care. So the guy you're fighting might not have any rules of engagement, which makes him more dangerous because he doesn't have anything to lose that he cares about, including his life sometimes. So you must consider that. However, you cannot operate without rules of engagement because you live in a lawful society and you must fear the law and obey the law or not and go to prison and lose everything anyway. So defining your mission is the first step in all training. In my level one classes, I talk to people, the first thing I say is, what's your mission? And a lot of people can't even really describe what their mission is. Um, it's getting better over the years. The consciousness is collectively starting to um, progress. But over the years that I've been on the range, it's not been good in terms of the answers I get on that first day. So define your mission first. And then put your training together according to what that mission is. So every single drill you do, every single skill you practice, every single procedure, and if you even make it to a tactical level, everything that you do has to be in line with the parameters, the objectives, and the rules of engagement of that mission. You cannot effectively put a training program together if you do not have clearly defined objectives, rules of engagement, parameters, threat assessment. You cannot do it. Most, most of these guys out here are throwing classes up and teaching uh, tactical pistol uh, it's mostly based on competition shooting. It's all about how fast can I get the gun out and hit the target. Um, and that leaves out, leaves big gaps in the information uh, that, that really needs to be covered if we're talking about lethal force fighting. Uh, lethal force fighting as a civilian or a law enforcement officer because you also have very strict use of force policies and rules of engagement. Um, and that's gotten pretty, pretty harsh on you here in the last uh, couple of years. So if you don't think that uh, your mission being clearly defined is important as a law enforcement officer, 
just look at all the guys that's had their faces plastered all over and their names ruined and people wanted to kill them and their families because the news got a hold of something that they did and uh, they may have stepped, pushed the boundaries on rules of engagement a little bit or maybe even not at all and just got blamed for it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's something to really consider right there. The things that I'm telling you, you see examples of fucking happening every day all the time. So, rules of engagement for your state are particular to your state. In my state, you can't be at fault for creating or escalating the situation. You have to have a reasonable and honest belief in serious bodily harm or death at the moment you use lethal force. And you have a duty to retreat if there's a safe avenue of retreat in my state. And I don't have a problem with that because if there's a safe avenue of retreat, you should probably take that rather than engage in a deadly fight that is unnecessary. And I know a lot of people that doesn't appeal to the sheepdog in them, but I'm telling you right now, coming from a wolf, violence changes lives. And if you can avoid that violence to, to live to fight another day, that's the route to go. If you have your mission clearly defined, then go on to put a training protocol together. Uh, without a clearly defined mission, everything you do is going to be throwing shit against the wall, see what sticks, and some of the shit that sticks is going to be the wrong stuff. Uh, it's very easy to get sucked into practicing the wrong things or, you know, getting into training that doesn't pertain to you. Now, do I believe in civilians training at, at uh, tactical level? Do I believe in civilians training at team level? I do. Uh, if you've mastered everything that, that is required in terms of fundamental skills and you're doing really well and you have good persistence and good repeatability in your, in your fundamental skills that are required for your mission, then cross-training over into other verticals is fun and it's also very beneficial. Uh, you learn important things. One of the things that, like for example, a benefit of training in a shoot house or working with a team member or team members uh, is the, the awareness and the ability to safely move around uh, no-shoots, active no-shoots, with a weapon in play. Because running through a shoot house with a partner that's shooting is not that much different than running through your house with a wife or a child that's not shooting. Uh, both of those partners need to be whole and safe and not shot. Uh, so operating with an awareness of where they're at all the time and trying to stay online with them, uh, that's something that you learn in shootouts. So yes, it is beneficial. Um, however, too many people want to jump ahead and put that first. So what I'm saying is define your mission, define clearly the parameters, which is how far you're willing to go, the objectives, which is what you're willing to go far for to protect, the rules of engagement, which are the laws of self-defense in your state, and threat assessment model, which is how do you assess threats and judge the level of your response to be appropriate. Those are all dictated by your mission and who you are legally in terms of rules of engagement and objectives. So give that some thought. First step in every training is define the mission.